school's out and we're having some good old fashioned 18th and 19th century fun. Today, we're at the Tavern Yard and I'm going to be teaching Tara how to play hoop and stick. We know that hoop rolling was very popular in ancient Greece and we have seen pictures of it as early as the 5th century BC and we know other cultures were playing this as well. Here in Salem in the 18th and 19th centuries, we know this was also a popular game, especially among certain circles, mainly boys. So to play this game, we're going to need to call on all of our skeletal muscles so that we can be successful. So Tara, are you ready? I'm I'm ready to go. Let's All do right. this. So you're going to be taking the stick and putting it in your dominant hand, the hand you write with. That's your stronger hand. You're going to be holding the hoop on the same side as that stick and putting your hand on it like so. Then I'm going to be tapping it to make it roll. And if you're really good at it, you'll keep it rolling for a long time. You can just call me butter because I'm on a roll. Ugh. This would be a lot easier if I wasn't wearing these long petticoats. They just get in the way. Do you think that's why boys tend to play this game more often? Yeah, probably is, actually. But you know what? Life is like that. Things trip us up, and we just have to keep moving forward. Now, as you can see in this beautiful painting by Renoir, that not only boys played this game. Great job, Tara! Keep on tapping the hoop! That's what keeps the momentum! So why doesn't it just fall over? Well, that's a good question, but I promise you we're not breaking any laws. As a matter of fact, the hoop is following some laws formulated by Sir Isaac Newton. Three laws to be correct. And they are the building blocks of all of the science of physics. Newton's first law says, an object will remain at rest or in motion until acted upon by a net external force. Newton's second law says, the acceleration of an object depends on the mass of the object and the amount of force applied to it. Newton's third law says, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the hoop was at rest, but then my tapping was the force that allowed it to move. Very good. You just saw Newton's first law in motion. In scientific circles, they say it's going from the inertia of rest to the inertia of movement. That's pretty neat. Yeah. You may notice as it rolls away, it speeds up or accelerates. It gains momentum and is now following Newton's second law of motion. So I'm going to make a motion to see if I hit it harder, if it'll go faster. I second that motion and may the force be with you. But be careful because there's another force that's going to try and take your hoop down. There's a second force? Yes, there is. The other force is an invisible force called gravity. And now we see Newton's first law in another way. The force of gravity is slowing down and stopping the movement of the hoop. So I noticed that when I hit the hoop, my stick kind of wants to bounce back. That's right. You're witnessing Newton's third law of motion in motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. While racing with hoops and sticks was very popular with the boys here in Salem, there were games that the girls liked to play. One of them was Battledore, which predates badminton by over 2,000 years. Toys were sold here in the 1800s. In fact, the records from 1827 indicate that Brother Reutz, Brother Fries, and Brother Kluhl argued over who had the right to sell toys in their shops. Apparently, adults weren't any better at sharing their toys than children were. In the 1830s, a toy was sold here that was created in France. It's called Grace Rings, and the girls love to play it. Now, it was created in France, and in French, they call it Le jeu des grâces. 
That has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? This game requires at least two people. Tara, you wanna join me? I'm ready. All right. So, what we've got is each person has to have two sticks. You have your two sticks? Got my two sticks. Two sticks, all right. And it has a beautiful ring with lovely ribbons hanging from it. Don't be fooled by this daintery. It has a purpose for it. So are you ready to play? Let's do this. Okay. What you do with your sticks is you make them in the form of an X. I will be placing my grace ring over this. As I lift and release, this ring is going to fly through the air. I am Lord of the Ring! This is pretty fun. And now for the return of the ring. Ah, oh, yes! Beautiful. So these lovely ribbons cause drag, which is the force that resists the movement through the air and reduces lift so that it's easier to catch. Did you see Newton's laws of motion as we were playing grace rings? Well, school's out for summer. Don't let anything hold you back from exercising those limbs. And remember, even though we've had a tough year, you need to use the force of curiosity to just keep moving forward.